This is the geometry first semester practice final. It's 56 multiple choice questions. We'll start with part, we'll start from the beginning here and we'll have to break this up video into multiple parts. But uh, starting with number one, we need to name three collinear points and we're looking at the diagram we have off to the right. If I look at the points, collinear means they're going to be on the same line. And the one I see is SPT because SPT are all on that line M, so those would be collinear. SVP, V is not on the line with S and P, or line P we should say. VRP, uh, R is the name of the plane, so that's out. And KTQ, Q is not even on the plane, so that's definitely not going to be collinear. Now we need to name two parallel lines in the same diagram. If I'm looking here, I want to find those markings for parallel, and that's those arrows right there. So I could have VS and KT be my parallel lines, so we'll just say SV and KT. Then we go, which statement is true for number three? PT, PS, TP, and SP, we have three rays and a segment. We want to find which one fits. So let's start with PT. PT means it starts at point P and goes through T. That does not include S. PS starts at P, goes through S. That does not include T. TP starts at T, goes through P, that actually goes through S, so we can use that one. So we're going to go with C. And if we looked at the last one, SP contains T, SP is a segment, it's only between S and P, and T is not between there. For number four, we're looking at what type of lines we have for CD and AG. If I draw those in, CD is here, AG is here, we have skew, parallel, coplanar, and intersecting. We're going to kind of eliminate some answers here. We know it's not intersecting. They don't have a point in common. We know they're not coplanar because they're not on the same plane. If they're not coplanar, then they're not parallel, but they are going to be skew. And skew just means two lines that don't intersect and are not on the same plane. Uh, we could have lines that don't intersect that are on the same plane, but those would be parallel. Okay, on to our next screen. Number five, what is the process of using facts and definitions to form logical arguments? That is our deductive reasoning. Really the only other one we've seen this, this semester is inductive reasoning, and inductive reasoning is going to be looking at specific examples or for patterns. So when we look in geometry at forming proofs and logical arguments, we're doing deductive reasoning. For number six, which postulate or definition is demonstrated? We have B is between K and D, so let's draw that. And then I'm saying that KB plus BD equals the whole thing of KD. So I'm adding the parts together. I don't know necessarily if B is in the middle. Um, it could be anywhere between K and D. So we don't want to assume it's midpoint. They're not asking us for a length, so it's not going to be distance. And we have nothing about them being congruent. But we're adding up the parts, setting them equal to the whole. That would be segment addition postulate. Number seven, which postulate or definition is demonstrated in the statement? Now this one, we have B between KD. And now those two parts are congruent. So KB is congruent to BD. So in this case, we're going to look at the definition of segment congruence because the two parts are equal. We're not adding them up like the last one, so it's not segment addition. We're still not looking at distance. But you know what? Midpoint definition may actually be a better fit. Maybe I got ahead of myself there. What we got to be careful with here is it is a midpoint. We can see that, and those two parts are equal. So actually, I misspoke. Definition of segment congruence would tell us if KB equals BD, in other sense, the numbers were the same, then they are congruent. So that's actually different here. So we want to actually go with midpoint, my mistake there. But we can kind of see how it's actually very similar. Um, we're talking about things being equal and congruent. But in this case, if they are equal, we have a midpoint. OK, number eight, we need to find BD. Now we know that AC and BE are the same. And if we look at that, they both have BC as kind of an overlap. So if we just focus on the part that they don't have overlapping, in other words, the 3x and the 2x minus 1 plus, 
Oops, went too far. The 2x minus 1, let's get rid of that. Now we can sit there and we can solve and find a value of x. And we would get that x got ahead of myself here. Let me fix it here. Let's try this again. A, C, B, E are the same. I see what I did. I need to find B, D, not the fact that they're equal. So we get 3x equals 2x minus 1 plus 5x minus 7. 3x equals 7x minus 8. I now get, there we go, now we're looking better. Negative 4x equals negative 8. x equals 2. So I have to plug that back in to find BD. Well, if I plug it in here, I get 6. And then 2x minus 1 would be 3. I combine those two. My answer is 9. Shrink that down. Okay, now we go to number 9. We need to find midpoint. We're going to use midpoint formula. We want to find a point as an answer, so that means we're going to add the x values, divide by 2, add the y values, divide by 2, and we're doing that because we're finding the average of the two values. So I have negative 3 plus 6 over 2, and then 4 plus negative 2 over 2. That gives me 3 over 2 and 2 over 2. Now 3 over 2 is going to stay at 3 over 2, but one, 2 over 2 becomes 1, so we get our answer of B. Number 10, we're looking at really identifying distance formula. And distance formula is a square root of x2 minus x1, the difference, we're subtracting, squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared. So when we look to identify, there's certain things we have to make sure are there. And this can be tough on this problem because we have a lot of information. The first thing is, is notice I'm adding between the two different squared values. Anything that's subtracting is automatically going to be out. So now we can look at what's left. If I have negative 3 and 4, it should be negative 3 minus 4. So there, so those two, A and D, both check out. And then 5 minus negative 6 becomes 5 plus 6, so it looks like we're going to go with answer D. On number 11, we have ABC is 134. That means that whole thing, that whole angle, is equal to the sum of its parts of 3x minus 1 and x minus 1. So I get 134 equals 4x. 134 divided by 4. Take care of there. Let's try that again. It should be minus 2. I knew it wasn't looking right. So we get 136 equals 4x. Now we divide this. We get 34. Now, is that our answer? It's really nice. They put that there as one of our multiple choice answers, but that's not the answer we're looking for. We're looking for DBC. DBC means we need to plug it into x minus 1. So we do 34 minus 1 gives us an answer of 33. It's a very common error on this type of problem is you just pick 34 and you don't go back and read the question. Make sure you're clear if it's asking for x in this case or an angle and you do have to plug it back in. Number 12, we need to solve for x. If I look at those two angles, they are supplementary. They form a straight line together or a straight angle. So I'm going to say 5x minus 14 equals, try again, 5x minus 14 plus 3x plus 2 equals 180. 8x minus 12 equals 180. We get 8x equals 192. If I do 192 divided by 8, We get an answer of 24. We stop. We make sure we don't have to plug it back in. It looks like we're clear. So it's going to be an answer of 24. Okay, number 13. We have 1 and 2 are supplementary. So let's draw that. Here's 1 and 2. And we know angle 1 is 67 degrees. So what does 2 have to be? Well, if it's supplementary, they add up to 180. 
So we're going to take 180, subtract 67, and we're left with 113. So that's going to be your answer D. Make sure you're careful in this one and not choosing complementary. In that case, you would have got an answer of A uh, because you would have done 90 uh, minus 67. Uh, supplementary adds to 180. 14, we have the measure of L is twice the measure of its complement. So if I have L and its complement, I have X, and let's think of it as 2X, because whatever its complement is, um, it's going to be twice that amount. Now we know if it's a complement, it has to do with complementary. So we're going to say 2X plus X equals 90. So I get that 3X equals 90 and X equals 30. So I got 30 and 60. So those are my two choices. Now notice 30 and 60 are both multiple choice answers. We've got to make sure we pick the correct one. So if L is twice the measure of its complement, it is twice as big. It is the bigger one. We're going to go with 60. For number 15, we need to find the value of Y. Now we can't find the value of Y until we find the value of X. So I'm going to say 3X plus 18 equals 5X minus 4 because those are vertical angles and we can set them equal. I subtract 3x from both sides, and I get to here. I'm going to add 4 over, divide by 2, and I get 11. So now I'm going to pick one of them to plug 11 into. So if I plugged it into the 5x minus 4, I would get 55 minus 4, or 51. Now, 51 and the value I have for y in the bottom angle have to add up to 180. So we'll go over here, 51 plus 3 times 4y plus 3 equals 180. 51 plus 12y plus 9 equals 180. So we get 12y plus 60 equals 180. 12y equals 120, so y turns out to be 10. As with the other ones, make sure you're solving for the right value. Don't solve for x here. You want to make sure you solve for y. Number 16, we get RQS, which is right here, is 1 half x plus 4. SQT goes here, and then RQT is the whole thing. So we're going to say 2x minus 47 equals 1 half x plus 4 plus 3 fourths x minus 6. So let's uh, maybe clear up some values here. 4 and negative 6 will give me negative 2. If I add those over, I'm going to have negative 45. So I have 2x minus 45 equals 1 half x plus 3 fourths x. And what we could now do is clear the fractions. And the way we're going to clear the fractions is multiply everything by 4. So I'd have 8x minus 180 equals 2x plus 3x. And by clearing out those fractions, I can now see, well, let's move over the 8x. So negative 180 equals 2x plus 3x minus 8x. I would get to negative 180 equals negative 3x. We'll come over here. x turns out to be 60, but they want RQS, so we got to plug it back into that 1 half x plus 4, well half of 60 is 30, plus 4 is 34, kind of ran out of space there, but we get an answer of B. So that finishes up the space I have here for part 1, I'll put a link into part 2 and we'll keep going in the next video.